first game of the season. Um, there's a few lung injuries, um, guys who couldn't get enough oxygen in. Um, and one particularly that Reese suffered when he got hit quite hard uh, after giving a, a scoring pass that um, he didn't really get a good look at, but Joey Carberry certainly enjoyed the, the end of it. So, you know, we're hopefully relatively unscathed, but, but Joey obviously will, will take 24 to 48 hours to, to know for sure. Devin Toner, ironically, was hobbling off when Sean Klein came back from his blood pin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he just rolled it. To be honest, as the more he was on it, the more he was walking it off. Uh, and certainly in the changing room now, he's walking around without a limp. Um, so I I would predict that he he will be fine. Joe, could you <coughs> comment on on John Klein, given that he's a specialist tight head scrummager, and that's something which plays, has, has traditionally been something that you've liked in your team as often? Uh, yeah, I thought uh, Jean acquitted himself really well. Um, our scrum was very good in the first half. I think we probably had four scrums and got penalties off them um, on, the, on the back of some, some really good power that we put through it. Uh, I thought around the pitch, his work rate was excellent. Um, a couple of really good impact tackles that uh, certainly stopped Italian momentum when he got involved. He's a big man, John, at about, you know, pretty close to 6'7", six, 6'8", six, uh, in height, but also about 120 kgs uh, in size. So, as you said, he is your genuine uh, stock standard uh, tight head lock who, who gets through a lot of work um, in, in the tight. And I thought he defended well, as I said. So. Yeah, you know, it, it was good. It was a good starting point for him, I think. John, was, was Jack McGrath tactical at half time? And what's your thinking on the five props or situation? Of yeah, um, I'm not sure about my thinking, but it, it was tactical, definitely. Uh, we were really happy with Jack's first half, to be honest. Um, again, he got off the line, made some good impact tackles. Um, and Jack, for us, is, is very good around our attacking breakdown as well. But uh, we wanted to shift Andrew Porter across and give him 20 minutes there because, you know, the reality is in, in the World Cup, you're going to have to have at least one prop who can play either side, potentially maybe even two. Um, John Ryan has played either side in the past. Uh, Finlay Bealham has played either side. So that those three would probably be the guys who would, who would cover that role. And then the others would be more specialists, the likes of Ken, Jack, and, and uh, Dave Kilcoyne on the on the loose head, and, and Tyg on the tight head. Joe, were you happy with the, 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 the ball alive a few times with a few of those tries, the half levels and passing with the last slipper of the back 22? Yeah, I, I think we'd like to be able to play with uh, enough variation that we can we can challenge teams in close or, or, or with a little bit of width. And um, as I said, I thought Reese's timing and, um, and accuracy, Joey hit the reach back for it a fraction, but uh, he, he's a nicely skilled player and, and did that really well. I thought the variation in our kicking game in the first half allowed us to keep the pressure down their end or to get the ball back as Andrew Conway did really well. Um, and uh, Joey's little little cross kick for Dave Carney to get into big space in behind and, and put the ball through and then <laughs> Gary Ringrose uh, destroyed, uh, destroyed the ruck and, and, and we got that five metre scrum and that's, you know, it's a great way to build pressure where uh, opponents aren't really sure how, how you're going to attack them. Joe, do you think uh, Chris Farrell made a case for somebody who can play both 12 and 13? Yeah, I, I think he took a step toward it. You know, it's it's uh, it's something that we know that all three of the other centres can do. Gary Ringrose uh, started his first test uh, as tw as a twelve, um, and um, coming off the bench when Robbie Henshaw got injured, um, he shifted into twelve. So uh, he, he's a guy who can play twelve. Uh, as lean as he is, Bundy obviously has played a lot of 12 for us and Robbie Henshaw has played a lot of 12. And at the same time, 
those three players can play at 13. So it's something that we want to make sure the three or four centres, depending on how we balance things up with potentially one of those centres being able to play on the wing. Um, I know it's a while since Gary's done it, but he played a lot of wing for Black Rocks. So, yo, know, I, I think it's just trying to keep our options open a little bit at this stage so that we can get the, the best 31 away um, to leave these shores on September 11, which is, you know, a month away, almost exactly. How pleased were you with Joey's performance for the 50 minutes, 50 minutes he was on the Yeah, I was, I was really happy with Joey's performance. I thought um, defensively he, he got himself into the right places and that's, uh, that's a challenge sometimes. Um, I thought he ran the game really well. Obviously, the variety in his kicking game, his passing game, and he he is a dangerous runner with the ball. Obviously, he finished the try with uh, with a nice carry on, on a change up with a good pass from Reese. But he, he almost got through the line a couple of times. So uh, he, he presents himself as a threat really well, but but he links well. So yeah, you know, I thought as a package, Joey's game was was really tidy. Yeah, he he wouldn't be the same player as Johnny, um, you know, and he, and he's he's still building his game. You know, he unfortunately he had a few injuries this year, which didn't allow him that that real continuity that he was looking for in playing at at ten where he wants to play. Uh, you know, for example, we had a five meter scrum and and we went the short side, and he just try to kind of probably overplay that kicking game when there wasn't space to get the ball through so close to the line. Um, so, so he'll be looking at those things over the next few days and, and looking to build um, on the back of what he, what he delivered today. Yeah, I thought he, Geordie and Reese were all, were all really good and I thought they, they collectively did a really good job. I, I thought Tommy was a bit unlucky, he got on the ball there at one stage and got penalised for having his hands down. but. You know, sometimes you get those because um, you know he, he did get onto the ball very quickly. So uh, it was good to see him looking for the ball post post tackle, and uh, you know he, he, he's a dynamic player, Tommy. He has a good acceleration, good ability to to change up when he's when he's carrying the ball, and at the same time, you know, I, I, I think he's building a little bit more collision winning uh, either side of the ball whether it be in the tackle or, or getting into the breakdown and making sure he's moving big bodies so that we can accelerate our, our play a little bit. Because I thought that was probably one of the frustrating aspects for us today. We, we kind of felt that there was guys, you know, who were a bit hard to clean um, or were, were difficult to shift. And, and maybe if, if they can be moved quicker, uh, either by you know, the, the officials or by us, and really we have to take that responsibility. I, I do think, um, you know, we, we should have been able to accelerate the game a little bit more in that second half. Joe, if Joey Kirby's out for a few weeks, does that change your thinking around how much game time Johnny Sexton gets in the next three years? Not, not really. I think we'll forge ahead with, with probably the, the, the plan we've mapped out already. Um, and to be honest, we don't get back together until Wednesday after this game, so it gives us enough time to have a bit more clarity about Joey. And then, then you're right, we we may adjust uh, our plans, um, but we know we've got to hit the ground running. We know how big a game uh, Scotland is in the in the first game of the World Cup, and so we can't really afford to have anyone underdone going into that game either. We we'll take one from the back. Oh, question on behalf of the Japanese media. Um, were you aware that there were many Japanese media here today uh, watching the game? Um, what's your perception of the Japanese team? And finally, um, how do you expect the game with Japan to unfold? Oh, Japanese, Subarishi, uh, they are very good, very strong. Um, uh, I've been really impressed with them in the Pacific uh, <coughs> Pacific Nations Cup so far, three victories from three performances against uh, really good teams. Um, 
you know, the, the latest one against the USA. But, uh, you know, I, I think um, they've got a, a variety to their game as well. Uh, Yu Tamura is playing, is playing exceptionally well uh, with guys like Matsushima and Fukuoka on, on the edges. They're incredibly dangerous. And, and then, um, you know, with, with Michael Leach leading their front line, um, uh, yeah, I, I think they are, they are going to be a really difficult, a difficult task for us. We saw what they did in the last World Cup and people are saying it, it was an upset last time against South Africa. Well, maybe it doesn't become an upset anymore. There's an expectation now more than an upset uh, that they can compete with whoever they play. Um, they'll have an eight-day turnaround when we play them. Um, after playing Russia in their first game. We play Scotland two days later, so we'll be going to Shizuoka on the back of a six-day turnaround. Um, so you know, that, that will probably complicate things just a little bit for us as well. So um, we're keeping an, an eye on the Japan team at the moment. Joe, are you taking out for three days based on the training camp? Um, we'll just see how, uh, I, I think, We'll see how the players came through today, and um, and we may not, but we're going to meet uh, probably tomorrow morning after having had a look at the game this evening, and then make it make a decision. So if if there are a couple that don't that don't travel, I, I think we'll probably travel with about 40, but but it could it could be 43, just depending on uh, we want to have good training numbers and. One of the problems, I think, is that as you uh, kind of branch off with a, a smaller squad, just keeping those guys up to speed with what we're trying to develop, it, it becomes a little bit of a, a difficulty for us, especially if we pick up an injury. We're playing England, Wales and Wales, uh, physically big teams, physically bigger than we are. Therefore, there, there tends to be a risk of attrition and we don't want those other players to get too far away from us because we want them up to speed if, if, if they do miss out on that 31 in the end. Um, because with 31 players, I think it's a very tight number that World Rugby limit you to. Um, you know, they talk about player welfare, but we have a six-day turnaround into a five-day turnaround and 31 players. Um, that's very, very tight. Uh, complicated and uh, all the teams I'm not saying that that's tough for us I, I think all the teams have tight turnarounds at stages yeah to be honest I, he could have played today uh, he trained fully um, in the footage I've looked at from the, from the week um, and uh, apparently he trained very very hard yesterday morning um, which is which is great. So I, I would anticipate that he he will train fully in in Portugal, um, and that he will be available for England.